Every day, more than 2 billion cups of coffee are consumed across the globe. However, down south here in Lisbon, Portugal, the founder of Nam Mushrooms, Nathan, found a way to turn coffee waste into mushrooms and into profits. We live in a world where a dead tree is worth more than a tree that is alive. Can you turn on the light, Maria? Thank you! <laughs> so, what do we see here? Welcome to Behind the Greens, behind the scenes of organizations that are striving towards greener future, where we are sharing their stories and showing you a way how businesses can still pursue profit, but doing so in the way that sincerely considers the environment. Every day, more than 2 billion cups of coffee are consumed across the globe. But did you know that we're only consuming 1% of it? And the rest is thrown away, making up to 6 million tons of waste per year. Most of the places around the world have no opportunity to dispose coffee correctly. Coffee gets thrown away with regular trash and ends up in the landfill, where together with the rest of the trash, it emits methane, harmful gas that contributes to climate change. However, down south here in Lisbon, Portugal, the founder of Nam Mushrooms, Nathan, found not only the solution to this problem, he found a way to turn coffee waste into mushrooms and into profit. So today I'm gonna to take you behind the greens of this whole wonderful process. And of course, we're gonna meet the founder and learn everything about this business and sustainability. So NAM started really from the willingness to try to have a positive impact. I studied business and I quickly understood that if we want to continue to live in a healthy world, we need to change the way we do business. And that's how NAM started really. It all starts here at the coffee machine. Guys from NAM collect coffee waste from around different places in Lisbon and they bring this coffee waste to the farm. Each month they receive about five tons of coffee grounds, transforming it into one ton of mushrooms and four tons of organic fertilizer that is used for vegetable garden, thus closing the cycle with no waste. So this is the first stage of production where we mix our straw with coffee waste and mycelium. These are the three ingredients of our recipe. So every day Delta brings us coffee waste. We receive about 200 kilos per day and we mix it with straw. So it's about 80% coffee waste, 20% straw and mycelium, which is a, basically the, the seeds of the mushrooms. Then we go to first to the pasteurizer, where we submit the substract to a, like high temperatures and low temperatures to eliminate any bacteria. And then we're ready to incubate, basically. Well, let's move into the next step. <laughs> so here we are inside the incubation room. Here we try to mimic nature and pretend we are in the middle of the forest. Oyster mushrooms grow inside trunks, meaning it's dark. Can you turn on the light, Maria? Thank you! <laughs> so, what do we see here? With the temperature at 18 degrees and no light to simulate the same conditions of the bark of the tree, at this stage, the mycelium begins to form in those bags. Here, they spend about two weeks, and as soon as the bag starts to turn white, they're moved into this huge container where they continue to grow in special spring conditions. So, here is the fruitification room. Here we have mushrooms in the last stage. They are ready to come out and be harvested. So they stay here for about three weeks. The whole process is six weeks. And here we mimic spring. So we have more humidity and also the temperature is a bit lower. Okay? Yeah. We're trying some blue LED lights to accelerate the pinning process, which is the, the process where the mushroom pops out of the bag. Uh -huh. So I and think is it's it working. working? Yes, Do they it like is. it? Yes. Do you like the blue light? I what think they it? love it. <laughs> 
After harvesting the mushroom, only about 20% of the bag was actually used by the mushroom. And the remaining 80% becomes amazing fertilizer that is essential for plants. This fertilizer is then used at their urban garden where they're growing those wonderful vegetables and the rest they're also selling to local farmers. I wasn't happy with what I was learning and so I started to look into different business models and that's how um, this passion for circular economy and for impactful businesses started. I started doing some internships about circular economy, about different business models and one of the business models that I found was to grow mushrooms out of coffee waste. And then I started to implement what I wrote in the thesis. So I found a, sort of an underground and I started collecting the coffee waste around the city. It's something that was invented in the 90s, so it's nothing new, it's not a new innovation. I started doing and I started to get attention and people really could identify with the philosophy of the business. And so that's how things started to grow. And the funny thing is that before starting this business, I never had a coffee before. So it was really out of a willingness to find a business model that could basically reconcile economy and ecology. That is the whole purpose and mission of this business. At the moment, uh, we already got to the break-even, which is really good, in only six months. Collected around uh, 20 tons of coffee waste. That's like a million cups of coffee that we upcycled. I see waste as an opportunity. I think that's really how people should look at problems and at waste in this particular case. But in general, when you have a problem, it's not really a problem, it's an opportunity to look at things in a different way and try to use a different angle and see, okay, how can I try to transform that problem into an opportunity that is then going to create other opportunities. So here we close the cycle. What, what are we doing, Marga? We're closing the cycle. We're putting the, the fertilizer yes. into it's a beautiful garden. So apparently, I didn't know that, coffee waste and straw turns into a great fertilizer that makes yes. your veggies grow and those are beautiful. Totally. So basically what we can see in this mixture um, is that in the end of production, the fungi is able to degrade almost all the coffee waste. So we mm -hmm. end up almost with straw, mm -hmm. just straw. Uh, this is really good because it increases the water retention capacity of the soil. So that also saves water. Saves water. Amazing. And the, the mycelium is really good because it creates this uh, symbiotic relations with the, the, the roots. So it increases is the exchange of nutrients and also the capacity of the roots to get more uh, water. Uh -huh. How important is it to take people behind the scenes of your production? I think it's really important because it's the only way they can actually see with their eyes uh, our impact. So how we actually upcycle the coffee waste and transform it into mushrooms and into fertilizers. So I think here is a really hands-on experience and they can also get to taste mushrooms which is nice. So. And it's super fun. What is your personal view on like the challenges of our planet? We need to start looking to waste in a different way. Waste needs to become a raw material for something else. So I think this is a common vision we all have here at NAM, is that our waste needs to be included as an input in some other uh, industry. Awesome, cool stuff. Yeah. Sounds good. Have fun here. We're almost yeah. done here. That is a big problem in circular economy, is that many people know how to transform or to how to innovate, how to upcycle stuff, but there is no clear blueprint or not a lot of business models that you can replicate. And that I think is a big challenge in any business model, but even more in circular economy, uh, because we still live in a capitalistic world and so you need to learn to sell, you need to learn to distribute, you need to, sell, to collect the coffee waste, to market yourself. How do I do that? In a way that it's profitable but also that is decentralized so that you give the opportunity to other people to also be small uh, agricultures. It's finding that balance between the impact and the economic model because I believe education is the first thing you need to do if you want to have a positive impact. The mushroom world has so, so much to give and it's so cool. It's just waiting for someone to make it cool, you know? And that I think is a big challenge also. We live in a world where a dead tree is worth more 
than a tree that is alive. And I think circular economy is at the end only trying to replicate the way nature creates value and applying that in our economy. Because in nature, waste does not exist. Everybody has a job and that's the way it should work also here. One of the things that we need to do is before cleaning in the doors, in front of the doors of the other people, we should clean in front of our doors. And I think this is the most difficult stuff. All young people are sick and tired of hearing that it's the end. So we should try to always be positive because it's the, uh, the opportunity and the best opportunity to change things. And I think in some way it's very exciting to be part of that generation because that means that we can reinvent everything. So to me it really looks uh, an exciting future actually. Um, it's a question of being able to transform that fear into something positive that is action. Because that I think uh, that is really what is missing is uh, people taking concrete actions and even if it doesn't result, at least trying. And if I try something and I fail, you might take my work and continue. I think that this place is a perfect example that there can be a world where the waste is not wasted anymore, but creates the value locally. A world where the waste is not wasted anymore, but creates more value locally. <laughs> but I think forgetting the ego and forgetting what you might win with that or what you might earn with that um, is a good way to start uh, because it's going to bring you a lot of cool people around. Um, yeah. Trusting the process, that Trusting everything, process, everything yeah. gonna at some point come, gonna come together. Come yeah, together. exactly, exactly. exactly. Yeah. Like you might not see what's gonna be at the end, but if you're believing that right now you're doing something good that you personally believe in, you're gonna attract like other people who believe in your exactly. idea as well. And exactly, exactly. And I feel like that can only happen if you forget a bit yourself and you let yeah. it flow. Yeah, yeah. And you go with the flow. Yeah. I knew it. I knew something deep was coming. That's what I nice. mean. Well done. <laughs> That is it for today. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope that you enjoyed watching this video as much as I've enjoyed creating it. It was so incredible to visit behind the greens or behind the scenes of Nam Mushrooms and to learn exactly how they're doing things differently as a business that actually cares about sustainability and about the future of our planet. This was a perfect example how businesses can still make money while keeping nature in the core of everything. I want to hear from you guys. Do you think it is possible to make all businesses go circular or to have sustainability at the core? And do you think this is the way forward? Maybe you have some examples of businesses like that or some ideas of the future businesses. Please, if you do, let me know about it in the comments. I would love to hear your thoughts about it. I need your support. Please like this video and subscribe to my channel and also click the bell button to receive notifications about my future videos. And I promise you, we have a a lot of ideas and a lot of incredible projects coming your way. Do you also suffer with eco-anxiety? Then you need to follow Behind the Greens on Instagram because over there we're only posting positive environmental news so you can keep up to date with all environmental progress and all the projects that are making our planet better every day. And finally, if you have any ideas or any suggestions for projects like that or you have a business that fits this model and you want to invite us to check out your behind the greens then please get in touch using the email that i left in the description thank you so much for watching and i see you next time bye